video on uh, Oracle's Virtual Machine Virtual Box. Um, set off to show you guys some temperatures here. CPU temperature I prorated, uh, I offset it uh, 1 to 23, so I added 23 degrees to this base temperature. Um, the value being reported from the thermistor, I guess on their their die there, doesn't accurately report the temperature. Um, I've got dual GPUs in this machine as well. You'll notice the first one's running a touch warmer than the second one. That's because I plugged the card into the wrong slot. I'm supposed to have my second ATI card there, AMD card, whatever you want to call it, in slot three. Um, so it's operating at times four. There isn't really much of a performance hit. Well, maybe max one and a half, two percent. It's almost negligible. would not even really notice it. Um, coming over here, you can see we got a 35% overclock. Multiplier I've taken up, I believe the base multiplier was 18. I've got that at 22 and a half. Slight overclock on the front side bus, which can probably go a little more. Our hyper transport, I basically maxed that out. Hey, if I'm not mistaken, the 4100 was only designed for 2 gigahertz or 2000 megahertz. Uh, memory bus is uh, 863 almost. Remember, it's dual channel, so multiply that by 2. We're looking at roughly 17 and a quarter. So about 125 megahertz uh, overclock on our RAM. As you can see down here, I'm using four sticks of DDR3 1600 megahertz. Um, XPG V1 from A data, good value. I'm very happy with that. Um, while we're here, we'll show you guys some power consumption. I have a DSP, sorry, DPS 750 watt thermal take. Um, as you can see here, our 12 volt rail, we're currently around 16, 16 amps. Our 5 volt rail, a little over 5, and our 3.3. .3. Head back to 12 here. I'll show you guys some wattage. Here's our wattage. Um, you can actually go back in here and peruse records and all that kind of stuff as well. Um, go up here, you can see a timeline visual. Um, here's your efficiency. So as you can see, as more load is placed on the power supply, efficiency increases. I've seen this go as high as 92.5% on this. It's got a, a gold certification. Back here to volts. Same thing. We can see the history through there. Cost consumption, if I had the cost per unit inputted, and there's our temperature of our power supply. So let's go back to watts here. Oh, there's our watts. Bring that on the other side. Okay. So we'll just put you out of the way for a second. We'll go back here to temperatures. So let's um, have a little brief tour here back over here. So there's our clock. 4.85. We'll do our device manager. We'll pull this baby up. So there's our drive array. A couple of 7850s inside there. Our infamous technically is a dual core processor. Um, the FX4100 only has uh, two physical cores with four logical cores. It shares two integer cores um, between its four logical cores. So technically it's just a beefed up dual core. Okay, so let's uh, let's launch our virtual machine. So here's um, Oracle's VM Virtual Box Manager. You can see I have several operating systems installed here. Um, so you'll notice that some say powered off, some say saved. So the reason for saved is so that I can resume the state from the last 
session. So here's Windows 10 guys uh, running in our VM box here. Um, I'll actually stretch this out a little bit. You notice the core speed's dumbed down a little bit here, and I'm only using one core to run Windows 10. So I'm going to make some changes here in my uh, my virtual box manager to utilize more cores um, when running my VM for this. But uh, believe it or not, it actually uh, with one core, it actually it functions uh, quite well. Actually, I'm very impressed. So naturally, the core speed is going to be dumbed down a little bit because essentially I'm using my base operating system to emulate the environment for this operating system. So um, let's go over here. There's not really much difference between Windows um, Windows 10 and Windows 8. Um, a few more functions. Windows 10 isn't quite complete yet, um, but just to give you a take here, let's uh, let's power this other one on as well. So here we got Windows 8. On the left, and we got Windows 10 here on the right, and we've got Windows 7 down here in the bottom. So this is all being done from this little cheesy FX4100 processor. Mind you, I've got several other nice components inside the machine. Um, I've got a Sabertooth 990FX R2.0 board, um, which is a very nice motherboard. Uh, 16 gigs of RAM, which is overclocked. Uh, processors overclocked. GPUs are overclocked. Uh, great power supply. Um, I've got a Corsair H100 240mm RAD with four 120mm bands for push-pull effect. Um, we'll just log in here. So as you can see, um, you can run multiple operating systems through VM um, concurrent with your existing operating system. Um, let's see. Uh, let's see what our power consumption is now. So we're actually doing pretty good. Uh, something to keep in mind with power supply, it's two guys. Um, not a lot of people talk about this. Um, when you're buying a power supply, don't buy it exactly the size for what you need. Um, so, for instance, if you need uh, 600 watts, you should be looking at minimum of 750. You want to go about 80% max. So, meaning whatever the total load is of all the hardware, everything that you're going to be connecting to that power supply, I wouldn't exceed 80%. Um, you know, it, it's like buying a one-ton truck to carry one ton of material around all the time. You might want to buy a larger truck um, to reduce the effects of the payload on the truck over a given period of time. Now you also have to remember that when you buy a power supply, um, when it's brand new, it's functioning at 100% naturally. And like a light bulb, as time goes on, you're going to lose a little resilience of that power supply. So, um, meaning that it's not going, like the light bulb, it's not going to be as bright the next time you turn it on. Um, there's always uh, a little bit of loss there over a period of time. This particular power supply here is guaranteed for seven years. Um, mind you, I paid a premium. So for a 700 watt machine, taxes, delivery, and everything, I purchased it online, brought right to my door, was $205 Canadian. Um, but I can wholeheartedly tell you that this power supply has been a dream. I love it. And um, would buy another one in a heartbeat. Uh, my rig in the living room, I'm using uh, a GX750, which is a cooler master. But it still uh, is a good power supply. I'm very happy with that single rail of 61 amps. Uh, I believe this one's single rail 62 amps. Um, but yeah, so... 
here we are. Here's our desktop. I've modified the desktops a little bit to uh, reflect color schemes that I like. I'm into the black thing and everything. So, but as you can see here, um, when I close all these windows, um, the two desktops are very similar. Um, basically, uh, yeah. So, but to be quite honest with you, I still like my Windows 7. I like my eye candy. I like the way that 7 works. It's like a glorified XP now. Um, taken us a few years to get the glitches worked out of it, but my Windows 7 runs so solid that, you know what, I'm becoming one of those old misers like the guys were with XP, just holding on, holding on, holding on right to the end. That's probably what I'm going to do with my 7. Um, to be honest with you, I'm not as proficient with 8 or 10 um, as I am with 7. Mind you, I've got a lot of experience with 7. Um, but yeah, so for the most part, um, there's a couple of new fancy features. Uh, if you have multiple windows open here, like I'll show you, um, we'll open up a few windows here. You can do this with them. So which is sort of uh, sort of cool. Don't forget, we're bouncing back and forth here. I'm also cutting a video. So our processor usage right now is at a little over 50%. Memory utilization is at 55%. Just to show you guys here. So almost 28,000 handles, over 1,000 threads. Um, this processor is not choking on it. As you can see here, 74 processes, physical memory 54%. Uh, let me go down here. Let's check out our resource monitor. Let's go over to memory. As you can see, everything is still relatively quick. Gives us a little bird's eye view of what's going on here. Here's our CPU. Also, something to pay attention to uh, is uh, if you guys are using uh, multi-core processors, I've got another video that touches on a thing called core parking. Uh, when you come into your resource monitor, you might see something beside uh, two of your CPUs. It says parked. I have a video uh, that shows you how to make a couple of registry adjustments to prevent core parking or core idling. Um, so essentially what happens is all four cores are utilized or six cores or eight cores, depending on which processor you're using. Uh, to unlock them. Uh, Windows has a tendency for power management to park cores, which sort of sucks. Um, you know, it's like driving a sports car, you know, I'm sitting at a red light with my 5 liter, light goes green, I want to hammer it, I want all my ponies at my gas pedal. I don't want to be, uh, oh, you know what, let's wait three or four seconds for all the ponies to get together and then go. Uh, by that time, you know, buddy with his little Honda there has, has destroyed me. So same thing with a computer. Um, when I want my ponies, I want them all. I want them all at one shot. Um, I, I want everything pushed to the nines. I want all my power. I want it available. I want it right away. So something worth looking at is uh, the, the core parking video. Um, very simple. Um, works for all operating systems. Um, Vesta 7, 8, B9, uh, sorry, 10. Um, not sure why they didn't call it 9, actually. Probably something to do with naming conventions, probably screwing something up with Windows 95, Windows 98. Well, bam, here's Windows 9. We're going backwards, right? So that's probably why they went with Windows 10. So, um, anyways, yeah, as uh, as you can see here, um, this is the, the shop. Uh, we can go back to Google. Um, we can type in uh, Windows 10 here, do a little thing like this. Uh, Come back over here. Same thing, Internet 11. Uh, use the recommended settings until I haven't really set any of this up. Uh, we'll do that again. Windows 10. So there you go. Um, so that shows you those, those two VMs. Um, what we can do here is uh, save machine state. That way we don't have to go through the powering on sequence again. This is um, reasons for virtual machines. Um, I'll tell you, the reason why I like virtual machines 
several reasons. One, as I get the test out Windows 10 here, totally independent uh, from my existing operating system, my existing hardware infrastructure, uh, something goes wrong, it's contained in the VM, I don't have to worry about it. Um, another great thing about VMs is uh, I'm also running KitKat. Um, right over here, I'll show you. There's Android KitKat 4.4. So I can actually download uh, bench test apps, other things uh, in the 4.4 environment here before I do it on my tablet, my phone, um, which is great. I can erase it, no signature, no nothing. Um, the other great thing about virtual machines is let's say that um, you have power constraints. You live in an older building or something, you don't have a lot of power, um, you can't plug in three or four towers, um, I don't know what your setup is. but uh, for power constraints, you can run multiple VMs, multiple operating systems from one platform, um, giving you the ability to run them all concurrent. You can toggle backwards and forwards. You can share hardware, the whole nine yards. It's uh, absolutely fantastic, and I'm sure there are a million other pros. Uh, as far as cons, yeah, there's a couple of cons. Um, there's a bit of a learning curve using VMs. Uh, biggest learning curve that I had uh, with VirtualBox was that... Um, after I had a VM installed, actually, here, I'll, I'll show you, actually, uh, I did a uh, Windows 3.1 here, which is sort of a bit of a joke. Uh, here, you can see we're going to do it in full screen. Um, the aspect's slightly out of kilter here, because I'm doing this on a 40-inch, my office here, so let's just bounce out of this for a second. So, um, I forget where I was going with this now. Um, I installed this. Oh, yes, 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 yes. Um, I wanted to um, play an old DOS game. And uh, I've got DOS as well, as you can see up in the upper right over there, DOS link base for DOS and Windows 3.1. Um, if I, uh, let's, let's close this here and let's go into our main and over to File Manager. So as you can see here, um, I've got a, a, a hard disk that I'm emulating, and then I have a optical drive that I'm emulating as well here. So what happened was, uh, here's the game in the uh, loaded in the optical drive. Um, what happened was, um, I can drop and drag files from similar operating systems, meaning uh, like how I showed you guys earlier, I had the Windows 10 there and the Windows 8. We can drop and drag files back and forth um, on those 64-bit operating systems on our desktop uh, through our actual operating system, just going back and forth without any special effort. However, with Windows 3.1 here uh, being a 16-bit operating system with an under uh, underlying layer 8-bit operating system known as DOS, um, we're not afforded the same luxuries here. So what I had to do is in my... Uh, normal desktop, uh, going going back over here, uh, so my mouse is locked in that window. Uh, doesn't do that with the Windows 10, 8, and 7. Um, but when we go down over here, uh, what I would do is go into one of my drives here, and as you can see, um, I've got a folder ISO output and operating system ISOs. So you can go in here and you'll see the ISOs <coughs> that we're uh, using. So what happened was the game that I wanted to play is called Lands of Lore. It's a 386 base game, yep, way back from 1992 or 93, I guess, from Westwood Studios. And uh, so what I had to do is create an ISO image, and then through my virtual machine, uh, the optical drive, I open the optical drive, I grab the ISO image, and boom, that's how you have that in there. So you can also share folders. There's two ways of doing that. I could have set up a, like a share folder through the VM, um, but I chose to do it this way anyways. Uh, so as you can see in here, I have also a copy of Windows 95, Windows 98. Um, this is the actual disk image for uh, Windows 10. Um, so yeah, just to show you guys a little bit of that. Um, while we're here, we might as well have a little peek see. Um, I'll show you the picture of the rig that I'm using right now. Uh, here's the insides. As I mentioned earlier, um, you see I have the one card in the wrong spot. It's supposed to be a slot down below. I was going to do a three-way crossfire 
Um, in my brilliant wisdom, though, at the last second, I realized I can't do a triple crossfire with these particular cards. Um, but anyways, I'm ultimately going to drop this down one slot. However, performance, the performance hit is negligible. Um, you can see up here I have a 240mm Rad Corsair. Uh, there's two Corsair 120mm fans on the top uh, for pull effect. There's two fans, 120mm Silent X fans, uh, liquid berry at the bottom for push. <coughs> Sorry, excuse me, guys. I haven't been feeling too well the last few days. Um, a couple of 120 Silence X fans here on angles. Uh, down at the bottom of the case, I actually drilled a hole through the uh, this portion down here, but underneath the drive cage. There's another 120 mil fan, Silence X, another one here to the left of it. 200 fan here, a 120 in here, another 120 up here that we can't see, and a 140 on the back. I think total case fans are... It's either 11 or 12 fans. How many we got? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So we have 10 120 mil fans in there. 1, 200, 1, 140. And then uh, naturally the fans on your power supply, video cards, all that. Um, we have 5 1 terabyte Toshiba drives in there. Um, 7200 RPM, 32 gig caches. I uh, got these hard drives for, I think, 50 bucks each, which was a great deal, brand new, full warranty, SSD above that. Up inside the caddy here is our 24x uh, DVD player, um, which will be deleted soon. Don't really need that anymore. Days of optical discs are done. And also a Riven 6i controller um, with six temperature zones and six fan controls. Uh, the case I'm using is an NZXT H630, which also has an integrated fan hub on the back. Um, that we can't see it's on the other side of this but uh, there's a couple of other pictures in here here's a picture of uh, the power supply the uh, DPS 750 um, fully modular and there's a USB jack on the bottom right there you can see the plug in to monitor your stuff here's a picture of the case it looks really tiny here um, great looking case solid fully um, fully insulated. I can't stress to you guys how amazing this case is. Um, I compare this case to, I believe it's, uh, if I remember correctly, is the Corsair 900, which is like a 300 and something dollar case. This one I got taxes in, shipping delivered to my door, which I got a really good deal. It was 140 bucks. I couldn't go wrong. Um, only thing is I should have bought two of these. Love this case. Totally tool-free, um, just amazing. Whack loads of room, you can do everything in this case. Um, here's my Affinity setup. Um, I've got a Hitachi 40 inch in the center here. I wish I could have bought two more Hitachi 40 inches, but it was out of budget. Um, so I managed, uh, we have a, a site here in Canada, well, I'm sure wherever you guys are in the world, you probably have a version of it. Uh, it's called Kijiji. I managed to find these 19 inch monitors on the left and right used for 25 bucks a piece. Um, they're X193Ws made by Acer. Um, five uh, millisecond response time. They're actually pretty good. So what I did is uh, I cheated out the resolutions on the 19s to match the 40 in the center so that we could um, maintain the aspect ratio when piecing the panels together. So um, the reason, though, that I set the Affinity up wasn't really for gaming. Um, when I get into coding and that kind of thing, I like to have my instructions on one monitor, my like code book on the one monitor, and my actual uh, model that I'm working on, let's say, in the center, and then a bench test monitor on the left. Or if I'm uh, doing something, uh, you know, some other type of productivity, for instance, uh, when I have an Excel document open, it's absolutely beautiful having... 85, 90 columns left to right, um, like the missus says, blows away any computer at work. Um, you know, having your documents that wide or being able to have a document the center screen, uh, email open on another screen and a browser on another screen. Um, above that, back in 2001, I built a set of analog uh, arcade controls to plug into the computer. Um, I'm actually, uh, this winter, 
going to convert this to wireless. It right now utilizes a PS2 connection on the back of the machine. So I've got a little laptop battery um, and the, uh, the charging circuit out of the laptop. When I take it apart, I'll be using that. Um, I'm going to strip down an Xbox 360 wireless controller, port out the circuit board out of that, integrate that, and the lithium pack into this to make it wireless and rechargeable. Um, so yeah, that shows you sort of the uh, the setup there. Um, here's the back of the case. Uh, down in here now, what happened, um, you'll notice there's an additional uh, little circuit board here um, made by NZXT. It's uh, a USB 2.0 uh, header expansion. So what happened was uh, the Asus Sabertooth 990FX R2.0 motherboard that I'm using only has uh, two USB 2.0 headers. Um, it has USB 3.0 headers as well. Um, problem was is that I needed a header for the Corsair pump uh, liquid cooler. I needed another header for the card reader. I needed another header for the power supply. Um, so what happened is uh, I had a component that actually came with a motherboard uh, which is a socket adapter to go into the USB socket. I managed to MacGyver it uh, by cutting off one pin, a key pin, and jamming it in there, which allowed me to connect two headers simultaneously to the one connector on the board. Um, however, this only works with single channel USB, um, whereas sometimes when you're looking at the header control, you'll notice pairs of wires going into the same socket, uh, as you see over here. Two reds, two whites, two greens, two blacks, um, as opposed to down here, where as you can see one green, one white, one red, one black. So I um, ordered this. Anyways, it has external power connector and the thing to uh, and another lead coming back off the motherboard into this, which in turn gives you two more headers and then two sockets as well. So the sockets inside allowed me to plug in the magic jack and or I could plug in some wireless thumb drives, whatever I wanted to. Uh, once a case is all stitched up, it's not accessible, so no one can touch it. So meaning if you had like a wireless adapter or something you wanted to plug in there or whatever. Um, yeah, so a nice nice addition. Here's the front of the case with the cover pulled off. As you can see here, I have the Reven 6i controller. I have just ordered what's called the Reven 4i Touch, which I'm going to supplement this with. Um, when this is deleted, the 4i Touch will go in there, which is a touch interface for the front. Uh, Close-up of our radiator and RAM. Here's the uh, Reven 6i display in the dark. Um, you can all actually change the colors too depending on your, your rig assembly. Uh, if you want to go red, blue, green, white, yellow, whatever your heart desires. This is uh, the rig in the living room. So I used an Antec 920 cooler. Um, and you know what? I'd hate to say this, but this 120 rad, uh, which also has push pull 120 mil fans on it, um, you can change the color on this pump. Um, I like the hoses better. Just overall, the Antec 920 is way better than the Corsair H100 uh, for size. Um, the the only thing going for the Corsair, I think, is um, basically is a larger rad for a little more cooling. Um, but to be honest with you, the temperatures that I'm seeing off this rig in my living room versus what I'm seeing in my office, this cooler does a better job. Mind you, I don't have the same overclock in the living room. This one's only clocked at 4.6. I haven't tweaked it as much as I have um, the one that I'm using to do this video right now. So just sort of gives you an idea. Um, I do have a profile at overclock.net. Uh, you can come in here, check out all the different components. Um, this just shows you when I'm putting the rig together. Um, there's our arcade controls, our 19 inch monitors, our rig. Speakers. I bought the same set of speakers for the living room in the office. I swear by these Z5500s, guys. If you want some serious ass destructional bass, you need to have these. 
especially for gaming. I'm telling you, you get into a game of like Battlefield or something and the guns, the explosions, this is the way to go. Um, I just love these speakers. They're THX certified, 1,010 watts, uh, total power, 505 watts RMS. Uh, they come with a remote. Um, like I said, THX, Dolby, uh, surround sound. These are just absolutely amazing. In fact, the sub is so big, um, like, and I mean it's big, it's heavy. Um, I have my buddy here. We finished a, uh, a can of beer, and there's actually YouTube videos of this, and this is where we were occasioned with it. Um, we had finished the beer, put the can beside the actual woofer. It sucked the can inside. That's how much air this thing is swallowing. It is insane. Uh, here's the GPUs. I bought one new, one used. Uh, one I bought used for I think 100 bucks. The other one I bought brand new. Taxes in for 174. These are great video cards. Um, the XFX HD 7850 uh, stock is 860 on the core, 1200 on the memory. You can bounce these up to 1025 for the core right out of the box. This is like overclocking your FX chip. Just amazing for overclocking. The potential of these cards is incredible. I love them. Here's the Toshiba hard drives I spoke of earlier. Um, there's five of these babies naturally. Uh, here's our Xbox 360 controllers. Uh, wireless. Use them on the PC. You can daisy chain up the four of these on the same wireless dongle. I've got two of them on there now. Um, here's the... Uh, Logitech C920. I've got a C910 and a C920. Um, both are great cameras. The only major difference between the C920 and the C910, first of all, the C920 offloads its video capturing from the processor on the machine. It does its own processing uh, via its own um, 264 codec processor inside the camera, um, which allows you to take exceptional videos and that kind of stuff without encumbering your CPU. Um, stereo mics, um, that's the microphone you're hearing right now. Four of this video is coming off that camera. Mind you, i got to tweak that a little bit. There's the expansion board I spoke of earlier, the IU-01 by NZXT. Here you can see the internal things. Here's the mouse. Um, using the same mouse in the living room, uh, Microsoft 5000. Works great. Um, one of the very few mice that I can actually literally get 25, 30 feet away from the monitor and still use it. Um, same thing with the wireless joysticks. I ported out the joysticks to the mouse using a joystick to mouse app, um, which is great because if I'm gaming and lying back on the couch and I'm done gaming, I want to watch a movie, I use a joystick to move my mouse around and select all my stuff and everything. Our case again. Our power supply. This is uh, my second keyboard. This is a uh, Logitech K810 wireless illuminated Bluetooth. Um, this allows me to toggle back and forth between my laptop, my phone, my office computer at a single push of a button. As you can see right here, there's three different Bluetooth buttons here. So uh, first one is I set for my office, second one for my phone, third one for my laptop. Um, I also have a second keyboard, a K360, which is a cheaper wireless keyboard. Um, the reason for that is, in my brilliant wisdom, when putting this rig together, I use a K10 wireless illuminated uh, full-size keyboard in my living room. I opted for something a touch different, um, this time which was a K10 Bluetooth, um, but I didn't take into consideration when posting the machine, you have no Bluetooth until Windows loads of drivers, so if I had to make changes in my BIOS, I was sort of screwed. So all I did is pick up a, a Logitech K360. I got it on sale, brand new, 15 bucks, wireless. Uh, it's a beautiful media keyboard. Um, you know, for, for $15, a K360 is like a nice keyboard for the money. Windows 7 Ultimate, naturally, wouldn't go any other way. Um, this is my SSD. I've had uh, very good luck with this. I'm actually um, 
while doing this video, I've been contemplating buying more of these, but much larger. Uh, naturally, as prices come down, I will replace my SATA mechanical discs with these. Um, but I have intentions on picking up two 240 gig um, SSDs to put in this as well. Um, very shortly, probably the next few days. Here's a close-up of the Reven 6i controller. Um, these buttons here at the ends, as you see, you can push them in and out, um, depending on your case clearance, if you have a door or something on the front of your case. Um, but you can turn these knobs left and right uh, to control the, uh, the, the uh, rotational speed of the fans, as well as temperature reporting and that kind of thing. Here's the H100 kit. Uh, cheesy $17 DVD player, uh, close-up of the drives. As you notice, the Toshiba drive made by Hitachi. Um, they acquired them some time ago. I think it was a couple of years ago. But uh, these particular branch of the uh, the DTO ones um, from Toshiba have been amazing ass drives. Um, you have to be careful. Looking at the product code down here, you'll notice. Uh, um, I can't remember exactly how to read these, but one was a CA, and I believe the other one's a BA. The CA has the faster rotational speed at 7,200 RPMs. The other ones are 5,400 RPM. So um, something to keep your eyes open. But these drives are definitely worth the money, guys. Um, to give you an idea, this cheap, shitty drive, or at least how it's revered to be, uh, I'm getting exchanges from drive to drive on this rig of 210 megs a second back and forth. Um, that is exceptional for a mechanized drive. I, I don't care what anybody says. I swear by these cheap drives. I like them. I haven't had any problems with them. Highly recommend them. And yeah, we're going to see lots of these. There's one for each entry. Here's our RAM. I've got four sticks of this in here. Um, once again, got the 16 gigs of RAM for 200 bucks. Taxes in was a good deal. Uh, another one of the video cards there. Here's our motherboard, guys. Lots of fan headers and everything on this motherboard. Love this motherboard. Um, lots of LED indicators, too, um, to let you know what's going on with memory, processor, uh, GPU, um, various things on the board. You can get a visual by the LEDs that come off and on if you do experience a problem. I, myself, have never, ever had a problem with any of those. Picture of the chip. And that's basically the rig here. And then down here I show a cost um, to put everything together, so on and so forth. This actual number here is in Canadian dollars. Um, I do mention down here that anyone that says an uh, a FX4100 processor is weak hasn't the slightest inclination or knowledge to properly exploit the true capability of this processor. I will gladly at any time, anywhere, put my rig against the best of the best, and I will assure you I stand beside them. 5 gigahertz every day and all the time for almost two years. My other rig is almost identical to this one running at 4.8 due to lower RAM frequency, which will be upgraded in the near future. The RAM that I'm using in the living room is 1333. The one I'm using in here is 1600. That's another thing I would like to talk about is guys saying upgrading from 1333 to 1600 is almost negligible. That's bullshit um, because there's more overclocking potential on the memory. So... What happens is as I increase that and the, the, the front side bus, we're going to get a lot more performance out of that. Um, yeah, I don't care which way you slice it. Uh, more cycles per second means shit's happening faster. Um, you know, it's like telling me uh, that, that if I have a car that does 133 kilometers an hour uh, versus a car that does 160. There's a big difference. Especially when we get out on the highway. I'm going to end up pulling away from you with the 160 car. So, something to keep in mind. Um, so, anyways. Um, let's uh, just close some of this stuff here. So, as you can see, uh, we'll come back here. Let's, uh, let's look at some temperatures again here. Here's in this opening for me. There we go. So, here's our temperatures. Um, 
I'm still looking pretty healthy considering the load and everything that we've been doing. Um, Here's the, uh, the GPUs here that I mentioned, so GPU 1 here highlighted, um, original score for clock, 975, the second one, 860. Now the funny thing is, is they both have the same BIOS too, eh? Same BIOS version, different date. So um, let's, uh, let's, go over, well, let's go over here for a second. So here's our first one. 975. I didn't touch the memory clock. So we got 975 on that one. And on our second card, our overclock, 975, guys. So, um, and for some, there they all are. Just took a second to get them. So yeah, you can pause on these um, anytime. Um, any questions you guys have, anything that you want to ask, um, please feel free to. Um, anything that I can help with, I would love to help. I love helping people. I love finding solutions to problems. Um, yeah, so aside from that, um, thanks for listening to me ramble on. Uh, I'll show you guys some stuff here. Um, I really hope you guys like the video. And, um, yeah, that's it. So I'm going to cut it here. I'm going to listen to some music on this uh, Winamp here now. And we'll talk with you guys shortly.